Uh, I've played Pokemon Go before. It's never been quite that intense. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, asp the aspirational part of the product roadmap right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Raids um, are coming, but not, not today. All right, I can, uh, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, we're gonna cover a lot of ground here in, in 25 minutes. Um, but I first wanna ask, in the audience here, can I just get a show of hands? Who here has played Pokemon Go? Wow, okay. <laughs> and can I, can I also get a now show, uh, secondly, um, who, who still is playing Pokemon Go? Okay, fair amount, but significantly less. And so I want to just start off by go getting right into it. Obviously, huge global phenomenon, exploded, it's everywhere. Um, and it's no secret that there's been a big drop off. Uh, there's even headlines out there that say it's dead. And so let's just, let's just hear it right off the bat. Is Pokemon Go dead? I don't know. Those of you playing it, is Pokemon Go dead? <laughs> <laughs> no. We are, uh, we're very excited, excited about the numbers and the initial response was great. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was a crazy summer for Niantic and for the Pokemon company. Um, just very humbled by, you know, the fan reactions initially. And, uh, but we did not forecast what happened over the summer. So um, it was crazy, you know, six to eight weeks there as we got s servers stabilized and that sort of thing, rolled out more countries, which also took a little longer than we had hoped. But um, we're pleased with where we are now. We have a really nice product roadmap. Um, you may have seen some of the new features we've launched over the last you know, six to eight weeks. Right. Buddy Pokemon, uh, daily bonuses just launched three days ago. Uh, nearby feature, um, which helps you track Pokemon, um, has been added. We started rolling that back out. It was in San Francisco test for about seven weeks. We just added other parts of the US. So we're, we're continuing to build the product, and that's really the focus. As far as the numbers go, you know, we've publicly stated 500 million installs globally, and that was the first two months. So that was back on September 7th. So that data is two months old. But um, uh, So do you initial. have any up-to-date data on usage? Um, not specifically around the overall installs, but um, one of the things we did do, in addition to the new features that were released over the last six or eight weeks, is we had our first in-game event. And for those of you um, that are familiar with kind of classic video game categories, um, MMOs, massively multiplayer online games, like World of Warcraft, we kind of most resemble those. That's the kind of game it is. It's 24-7, you're always battling. And we had our first in-game event, which is a, a very common way that, was Halloween. Um, that, you, uh, yeah, it, that you engage with players. And All we right, did that over Halloween. That. We're going to that. I want to back yeah. up first before we go too far into, into yeah, all no the new features. Sure. You said that your original expectations were nowhere near what ended up happening. So can you tell me about what that was like, that, that initial first six weeks when it was going viral, your servers were crashing? Can, <laughs> What did that feel like? Yeah, um, it, was a, it was a crazy summer, like I mentioned before. Um, this whole mix of emotions uh, and, and things happening within the team from you know, excitement, exhilaration, sleep deprivation, mm -hmm. um, and, and mostly humbled because of the, the fan response. Um, as you mentioned, not what we had forecasted. But you had to make some hard decisions. Can you we talk did. through some of those? We did, yeah, no problem. Um, the biggest thing was keeping the server stable and also adding more countries into the rollout. You know, we initially rolled out on July 5th in Australia and New Zealand. We then added the United States July 6th, and we had a plan to get out more countries you know, within a couple of weeks, but it took us a little longer than that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the great thing was we had great partners, Pokemon Company and Niantic, are, you know, we're kind of tied at the hip, um, working together. Uh, the Google Cloud Platform team really were, were our heroes in this one. They mm -hmm. um, helped us get things stabilized and help us to scale. Uh, there's a great story on our blog um, that you can read that shows kind of what our baseline was, what our 5x forecast was, and what actually happened. And so we give them a lot so of credit. So what were those, just can, in case anyone here is not reading your blog? Oh, OK. Um, what was the question? Like the, the story of what your expectations were versus what happened. Yeah, I mean, basically, we were off by orders of magnitude as far as um, the you know, adoption of the game and, and how much people would be playing it you know, in terms of session lengths and um, the uh, frequency of sessions in a given week or a given month. So um, with partners like that, you know, we were able to, to get things stabilized. Um, but we appreciate the fans being patient with us. We know that there was a lot of that, that warning screen that's got the group of Pokemon saying, you know, thank you for your patience. Uh, we're working on it. And, um, you know, we got through that, that six weeks. It wasn't easy, but yeah. um, we're, we're now glad to be at a steady state and, and uh, on to building, you know, new features and adding those to the game. So you, you did take a little criticism for taking away features such as nearby, yeah. which helped people f identify when there was a Pokemon, yeah. you know, three or four steps away from them. Well, can you talk through the decision to take that away and, you know, how you managed to bring it back? 
Yeah. Um, that was a dis uh, feature that we had to disable early in the game just because there was a lot of you know, things happening with people trying to find Pokemon. So um, just to err on the side of, of safety, um, you know, that's one of the things that's really paramount to us is making sure we're providing a fun user experience but, but doing it in a safe way. So we rolled that back. There and were third-party services. And it wasn't safe because people were walking into traffic? <laughs> we just wanted to, to be over-cautious and, and err on the side of safety. So mm -hmm. there were third-party services that came in and filled the gap. Unfortunately, when they started to scrape the servers, they also caused other you know, problems. And so we had to block those. And we, we took a little bit of criticism on that one from the mm -hmm. fans because, again, they wanted that, that functionality. But that's why we were so excited about what happened last Friday night when we started to, to roll nearby out um, in a few other markets. And, and hopefully that'll continue and uh, it'll uh, meet that need. Did you, did you see a bump in user uh, in usage after that? Um, you know, it's still kind of, that's only four days ago, five days ago. Yeah, okay. We're still measure what that response is, but we expect it to be pretty positive. We, we had had it live in San Francisco for almost two months and mm -hmm. the fan reaction there was positive. So we expect it'll, it'll help. Um, great. And, and the other thing uh, that I wanted to ask about that you guys initially got some criticism for, and I don't think I'm totally clear on this, and maybe some people in the audience might be that way as well, is what you're using the data for and what you, where opportunities that you see there and also how you're keeping the data safe. Yeah. So the, the main way that we use the data is basically for game state and player state. So if you're leveling up from you know, level 15 to level 16, or you've captured a gym, it's really for your own personal profile so that you know where you are in the game and kind of the actions that you've had. Um, but we've never really you know, done anything that um, there was a little bit of a hiccup with the Google account services that we fixed after the sixth day. Um, we only get Google ID and email address so we can track your account. And we're very careful. Um, there's a thing called COPA in the US. And we use the Pokemon Trainer Club accounts, which the Pokemon company manages, to make sure we're COPA compliant for users that are under 13. So we're, we're being very, very careful and responsible. And of course, we don't share any data with any third parties. Do you see any opportunity there to do something with that data? No. <laughs> no. We, no. <laughs> All right, so talk to me about your relationship with Nintendo and the Pokemon company, which is actually apparently separate. They own the IP, is that correct? Uh, yeah, there's, there's two separate entities. Um, they are both, uh, we have a commercial agreement with both companies, but they are also, they were the lead investors in our Series A round mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when we spun out um, over a year ago. So um, that was um, nice to have not just the commercial agreement to do the game, but also to have their financial backing. So they've been great investors, great partners, yeah. and um, you know, it's a, it's a nice mix, in particular our partnership with the Pokemon company, because you know, they make sure that we're doing things that are good for the brand. Um, you probably know this is the 20th anniversary of, of Pokemon. Um, and so we're, we're very pleased that we could be a part of that. Um, so they're helping to make sure that things are on brand. And then, you know, we're doing some things with, you know, the, the innovative technology we're doing with geospatial and location-based services. And it so far seems to be a, a nice... Uh, a nice marriage. So you guys have been actually working on this for four years, and you have a, another lesser-known game called Ingress, correct? Uh, that that isn't quite as popular as Pokemon Go. Could, could this have been in a success without that IP? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, people joked, and in, in fact, the opening you know comment around uh, overnight success, um, but it has been a long term in the making. Um, our CEO John Hankey, uh, his he's kind of a serial entrepreneur. His first two startups were actually gaming companies. His third startup was Keyhole, which became Google Earth. And then he worked for a number of years at Google on the, the Geo Maps team. Mm -hmm. um, and at Niantic, we've been together for, gosh, almost five years now. And Ingress was definitely um, an R&D project. You know, it helped us figure things out on the technical side, the customer support side, um, even on the marketing side, like how we go to market. It's, it's a very community-oriented um, you know, approach. Um, we were very proud this summer that we you know, we're able to go to market with only owned and earned media uh, in terms of press and social and that sort of thing. Um, we spent $18,000 to signal boost uh, our YouTube video at, at, for the first 24 hours and then shut it off. So um, we're, we're fortunate and that's a testament, you know, frankly to the, the IP of Pokemon mm -hmm. and also just to the um, fan reactions to the field tests that we did in the spring and, you know, that la launch trailer went out mm -hmm. about nine months before and, and got some, you know, people very excited. So uh, we're, we're fortunate to be in that position. Are you looking for more uh, more IP partners? Uh, is there going to be a Pokemon Go for, like, I don't know, Mickey Mouse or some other <laughs> kind of brand? Well, I think first and foremost, um, you know, not to keep pointing back to Ingress, but mm -hmm. um, it's a marathon, not a sprint for us. Um, Ingress has, is going to celebrate its fourth anniversary this coming Tuesday, November 15th. Uh, in fact, I'm going to Rome tomorrow. We have a player event on Saturday in, in Rome, and uh, we'll have several thousand players there in the streets of Rome um, 
doing an event there. So um, it really was an important project, and we learned a lot of lessons there that then lent themselves to Pokemon Go. So uh, yeah, all right. Give me a couple film. examples of lessons that you've learned from from Pokemon Go. Uh, from Pokemon Go itself, I think you know first and foremost. Um, you know, there's a lot of expectations. You know, the IP, the, the, the brand is very beloved. Um, we have a lot to live up to, and we have to make sure we, we achieve the quality marks that the Pokemon company expects, and, um, you know, as importantly, what the fans expect. So that's, that's one big lesson, is making sure that we're always, you know, very careful and thoughtful about how we communicate and what we say, and, and most importantly, what's, what features are in the game, to make sure they um, meet that quality bar. The other lessons are just, um, they're around scale, you know. <laughs> um, Ingress did help us solve a lot of things on the technical side, um, but we've now learned, you know, what, um, how, how, how big things can be and how to manage that 24-7 um, around the world with, with, you know, literally tens of millions, hundreds, hundreds of millions of players playing at once. And, and uh, technically, some, some pretty tough challenges for our CTO and the team to do. But, you know, with the help of some partners, like I mentioned before, um, you know, we were able to get through it. So those mm -hmm. have been applied. So I know there's probably a lot of entrepreneurs in this audience, yeah. a lot of possibly gaming entrepreneurs who yeah. are interested in copying this kind of success or they <laughs> want their game to go viral. What advice would you have for them? Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, it's the whole test and iterate thing, which, you know, a lot of people are familiar with that. A lot of people do that. But um, we were fortunate that we had, um, you know, the, the runway that we had with Ingress to really learn a lot of those lessons as far as how would you manage a game like this um, at scale. Um, but I think the lesson there, to answer your question, is all around, you know, test and iterate. Um, it's okay to fail. Um, we made many mistakes on Ingress. And, um, you know, there's some What's things... What's an example of one? Um, probably the... One of the biggest ones was um, there's, a, there's a capability called regional scoring mm -hmm. um, where basically the two teams, in, in the case of Ingress, there's two teams instead of three teams like mm -hmm. you have in Pokemon Go. Um, you know, regional scoring was something where people could actually track their progress on a city level, on a regional level, and on a country level um, in terms of how each team was doing. And that was something that the big lesson there was it just took us a little too long to get that feature out. So it, it did eventually come. It was well received. Uh, players used it for their own kind of local battles to, mm -hmm. to track what was happening. But um, that's the kind of functionality that you want to have, you know, sooner versus later. And, you know, so that's, those are the kind of things we're thinking about for the Pokemon Go roadmap. Um, great. And then can you just talk to me a little bit about monetization? Um, I, I, you, you mentioned the Halloween thing, and I want to yeah. understand that a little bit better, because I read that you guys made $200 million in one single day on Halloween. How, do, how did you do that? <laughs> um, well, we don't really focus on revenue. We've never released any public revenue stats. Um, I know the the charts are out there and people can speculate. Um, we really are focused on user engagement, just I'll say that up front. But we do. We are fortunate enough to have two, you know, pretty robust revenue streams. Um, all mobile free-to-play game developers know that IAP uh, in-app purchase is the mo main way to monetize these types of games. Um, and our development team, working with the Pokemon company, um, had a great initial offering. Um, we're really pleased in the feedback we're getting from the community that you know they don't feel fleeced or that we're doing anything that's too aggressive, like pay to win or anything like that. So we've gotten some good feedback there. Um, and, and luckily, that revenue stream is, is doing well for us. Um, on the second side, though, the, the second revenue stream we have, which, again, I keep pointing back to Ingress, but there were early learnings. We actually launched Ingress without IEP, specifically because we wanted to test this, this secondary model, which for us is all about sponsored locations. Um, we have these paid sponsors that get paid to, uh, to get integrated into the game. And it's nice because it's a natural way to integrate them into the, the game board, which is basically the game map, um, and do it in a natural you know, kind of way. So some of the early partners we had on Ingress were Lawson in Japan, SoftBank Mobile in Japan, AXA Insurance um, was one of our big global partners. And a lot of those you know, partners now have, have, have come over to Pokemon Go. Lawson, for, or, mm -hmm. uh, for, sorry, SoftBank Mobile yeah. was one of those initial partners. McDonald's Japan was an initial launch partner. And uh, we just announced a new deal that just launched a couple weeks ago in the Philippines with Globe, who's a, a mobile carrier there. So you'll see those partnerships continue for Pokemon Go. We'll be very selective and careful about who we choose to integrate. Again, make sure it's good for the brand and a fit with, with Pokemon Company, as well as works for Niantic. But um, you'll see some more of those. And it's nice to have a couple revenue streams, um, yeah. you know, just in terms of managing the business. And can we see more uh, sort of holiday or very very specific, you know, kind of time, time uh, specific uh, promotions to kind of lure some of the players that raised their hands earlier the first time, but not on the second question, back to the game and, and re-engage them? Yeah, definitely. Um, again, uh, some 
in-game events were very popular, and, and we did them a lot in Ingress, and we just did our first one with Pokemon Go over Halloween. Um, we saw 13.2% global lift mm -hmm. in average DAUs week over week with that program, and in markets like the U.S., where Halloween, arguably a little more popular of a holiday, right. um, that lift was as high as 19.2%. So, you know, those are the kind of things, again, kind of back to test and iterate. We're learning, you know, we're kind of gauging feedback as we, you know, from users on new features we launch, big or small, um, these in-game events, and, you know, potentially even doing live events. Ingress, you know, I mentioned going to Rome uh, this weekend for an Ingress event. We've had some success with that as far as really building strong community in local towns and cities, and we're talking to the Pokemon company to figure out what that live event strategy would look like, and uh, you may see some of those next year. Yeah, and so you mentioned community, um, and, and we talked about this earlier. Yeah. Is, is there something different about building a community around a mobile game versus, you know, uh, PC gaming? People are sitting there at their computers, and there's a really strong community in that, in that culture, but, but maybe it's a little bit different in mobile gaming. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's all around, you know, how you surprise and delight your fans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was fortunate enough to work on some amazing IP over the years at, at Disney and EA, in, including titles like The Sims, which have very broad appeal, you know, mm -hmm. gender neutral for the most part, um, a lot of mix of, of different um, ethnicities, geographies, et cetera, that were, were playing the game. Um, but I've never, never seen anything with the breadth of the diversity of this. And I think the, the one thing that matters is just if someone's passionate, either about the gameplay mechanic, um, you know, we have a lot of players that really love the, the capture mechanic in Pokemon Go versus the battle mechanic, or they're just fans of the IP. Um, or their Ingress players that have been with us for years and this is a new experience for them. Um, keeping those different sub-communities you know, happy and hopefully meeting their expectations um, is what we're trying to do. And I think you know, to that end, um, it's only month four. <laughs> you know? and, and like I said, we have a long, long path ahead and we, we view Pokemon Go as something that's going to be um, something that's going to be around for years. And, and your contract with them is, in it. Is, is a multi-year contract, correct? Yeah, that's right. And are you exclusive or are you able to work with other, with other groups? Yeah. Because um, I'm getting pitched all the time now on, on Pokemon <laughs> Go 4X. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, we've heard that there's a lot of those pitches going around. <laughs> um, you know, John Hankey, our CEO, has spoken since the early days of Niantic, even with, when we were within Google, that we had more kind of platform aspirations, that yeah. we wanted to, to provide this technology to other uh, teams. You know, we chose a gaming use case to pay off what is possible, um, and that was through Ingress and, and now with Pokemon Go. Um, but that still is part of the, the company's long-term plan, and our investors know it. You know, they're, what would they're that aware. look like? Um, it would basically be um, you know, a, a kind of relationship where we would, we would provide the tech, just like we're doing for Pokemon Go, and figure out unique game designs and, and that sort of thing. But and so, nothing to share or announce today. So some of these startups in the audience might be able to license your technology to build their own AR games, or how would that work? Long-term, that would, that would be the general model. Um, but if they, have, if they have specific questions, they can email partnerships at nianticlabs.com. And okay, and we're actually them. almost out of time, yeah. but I think, and unfortunately we weren't allowed, able to do audience questions, but I think that you are t going to take questions maybe on the app. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I'll take questions on the app afterwards. Um, they made us shut off our phones, but if you do have questions about the game or that sort of thing, I'm happy to, uh, happy to answer them. All right, well, uh, please join me in thanking Mike. Uh, this was great. Great. Thanks, everybody.